Welcome back, everyone. This is Arafelon playing Magical Bringer Corona, the movie. Last time, we played through the prologue and also went through the pamphlet, which is basically the instruction manual. In the story so far, Corona and Noel, Corona being the magical girl protagonist and Noel being a demon ward, were fighting in the Arctic when Noel kind of lost her temper and melted a bunch of the ice. This is a hazard of living with an easily bored demon ward. Yeah. Anyway, can continue from there. I have a save I put at the beginning of Act 1 proper. Uh, you'll notice to the right there are also several other save games I have. I decided to go ahead and play through the Chapter 1, Act 1 off camera just to make sure everything was working properly. I did have to make some adjustments to the script to keep the text from skipping forward on its own. That is a problem I've had several times with this engine. Uh, this particular game does some extra text processing to make it easier to change things like font sizes and styles, and I think something just sometimes goes wrong in there, and I have to rearrange the things a little to get it to work properly. I don't really know. It's frustrating. But anyway. I'll also be using the alternate save for... Uh, there are some places where decisions you make relatively early on have effects later on in the game, so I'll be using that to explore alternate options when that becomes applicable. We are starting here from the beginning of Act 1. This, as it turns out, is television narration, so... Well, not narration. It's a TV show Tron is watching, so I'll try to... Be gone, villain. Fatal Sword, Dual Nebula. Gah! Yep, here's the show. Another kill for Andromeda Samurai. To east, to west, in search of evil. Merciless slayer of foul fiends. Once involved, in it to the bitter end. The warrior must show a brave face. Okay, so both of the last two lines here have uh, Japanese idioms in them. Uh, the first one is uh, it's a variation on Doku o Kowaraba Saramare, which basically translates literally to once you've eaten poison, you might as well finish the whole dish. And it's similar in concept to things like you might as well be hanged for a sheep as for a lamb, where basically it's saying, look, you're already in trouble. You might as well go out, finish it. There's no point trying to get out of it. And the warrior must show a brave face is... It's from a proverb that goes, uh, Bushi wa kuane do takayoji, which literally translates to something like a warrior leisurely picks his teeth even if he hasn't eaten anything. The concept being that you know, the, the idea of honor demands that you've just eaten, have no hardships, even when you're so poor you can't even afford a meal. Anyway, Andromeda Samurai. Yeah, I like how this edit turned out. Most of the important background images that have text in them, I've done... I've basically put the English on them. That one came out better than a lot of them. Anyway. Yeah, as you can see, Corona is in her street clothes now, watching TV at home. And I wasn't quite satisfied with what I was doing with her voice last time, so let's try something a little different. I can go... Yeah, I need to try to exaggerate it a little more to get more of an anime girl effect. But if I go too high, I sound like Elmo! And that's not really what we're going for! But if I kind of scale it back a little, I think we have something that... I think we have something that kind of works, so... Ah, that was neat. Morning reruns sure are the way to go in summer TV. Next show is... TV making noises as it shuts off. Joining off the TV for the time being, now that it's all news and stocks, tossing my empty ice cream cup in the trash, keeping the spoon in my mouth, I open the newspaper TV listings. Warachate itomo. Afternoon, Hamaru Hamaru Drastic TV. Yeah, these are both kind of spoofs of actual TV shows. The first seems to be based on the Morita Kazuyoshi Hour, which is subtitled Warate Itomo, which is basically, sure, you can laugh. It's an actual Japanese variety show. 
Uh, the other one, Gogo Hamaru Hamaru Omoikita Terubi. I'm not sure what that's a reference to, but it sounds like an exciting kind of TV show that her and I might like enjoy watching. Both start in half an hour. What should I wear? How much time will we have, but maybe we have to be good? The spoon in my mouth clattered around as I mumbled to myself. I eat box lunches from the lid, I eat ice cream all the way to the spoon. No way can I give it up. Here's a Cirrus, as usual, speaking in her head, because there are two minds in one body. I wasn't quite satisfied with what I did with his voice last time. I was trying to go for a Darth Vader-y kind of thing, but I think it just came out sounding more cheesy, so... Maybe if I go more a Diablo narrator? Good grief. How slovenly for a girl of marriageable age. Ah, okay, fine. Talk in your head or take the spoon out of your mouth. Pick one and do it. A oh, serious morning. Who would opt for talking in their head normally? Duh, it's my way summer vacation. Whatever I do, it's allowable to the max as summer goofs ups right now. And so, can I have another ice cream? Wait, 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 just how does that argument make any sense? Besides, I thought I told you not to eat anything sweet while my consciousness is present. Yeah, Osiris, as comes up in the previous game, he's not used to sweet food and it kind of makes him nauseous. It's bad enough already that with all the sweet things being tossed back just earlier, my quiet sleep has been disturbed. You're just as bad with dealing with sweets as ever, huh? Can I have a curry gari kun Now, oh, here's another spoof of a Japanese product. Something called gari gari kun It's a popular band of popsicles. They feature a wide variety of flavors and, as you might expect, a cartoon mascot. Not a chance! Ah, come on, Stingy. It's not like I'm going to burst my belly no matter how much I eat. The magic energy enduring your stomach's condition isn't free. Ah, I was given life as a magic weapon to kill the gods, guided many heroes into power, and now I'm on nanny duty for some little girl. How cruel a thing is fate. Discussions on life? Mira San's show is starting. Wanna try calling in? Perhaps so. Wait, how am I supposed to explain? And what about a self-introduction? 12,000 years old, wishes to remain anonymous? As if I could say that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, I'll hold off on the ice cream, so let's watch Mino San disgusting life. Phew, good grief. The legendary Black Demon Sword sighs despite having no mouth. Smiling a bit at his demeanor, I grab the TV remote. I wonder if Osiris has noticed. It's already been a month since I summoned him for our magic crest. Thanks to our pact, our bodies are bound together, but Osiris has been getting used to the world pretty well. He had more of a stuffy personality when we met, you know? Hear that out. With that adorable voice, a cute girl came into the living room. She's taken off that demon ward manteau thing she usually wears and is now cute in cute street clothes. Oh no, don't be fooled by her looks, or so Osiris says. I think her superhuman, well, actually truly inhuman cuteness is foul play. Here we see Noelle's full name for the first time. The D appears to be from Italian, possibly influenced by Dante's Divine Comedy. It's roughly equivalent to of in English, so basically this is saying it's Noelle of the family Belzebuth. Corona, too hot and tight. Cling not onto me to the moment we eat. Pat not against my head. Rub not thy cheek against me. What am I, a cat? But, but... My brain forgetting words except for but and cute, I stroke Noelle's hands as affection leads me. Her flowing silver hair, pale soft skin, red eyes, pointy ears, tail, they're all within my arms now. Can there be any greater bliss? No, none. I could hear Osiris sighing lightly inside my head. I can pretty much tell what he wants to say. No matter what she looks like. 
Corona, is it not about time for thee to spare me? Noah-chan, rather than trying to brush me off, instead pulled the spoon out of my mouth. For some reason, I only now get embarrassed over having a spoon in my mouth and let her go with an awkward laugh. Had her aim been for me to let go of her like this, or had the spoon just been getting in the way of her view? She may look childish, but it seems she's lived as many years as a human lifespan, so she does have a fairly prudent side. Ah, that disparity is just so cute, too. Oh, Anxian, watch TV with me? Nay, shalt allow me to read the newspaper. Noan Chan picked up the newspaper as she spoke and opened it on the table. She looks like a kid on the tiptoes at a glance, but she's reading obituaries. No big surprise from Belzebub, the demon lord of famine and death. Osiris has me read newspapers too, but that's just flipping through the pages and gathering information. About all my own consciousness is actually reading or the TV listings and Kopo-chan. Yet enough, uh, yeah, yet another spoof of an actual Japanese thing. There's a serialized manga called Kobo-chan by Masashi Ueda, stars a four-year, five-year-old boy, and it's also appeared in the U.S. under the name Kobo the Little Rascal. In any case, are human newspapers kind of fun to read? Yes, the printed type of this country is complex and most interesting. Okay, I feel like I've been slipping out of my corona voice. It's a little unnatural for me to go that kind of tone and highness, so let's try it again. Uh, so I start with Elmo. Elmo! And kind of, kind of pull it back a little. Okay. I think this is where I was going for corona, so... Hmm, well, I'm watching TV then. Casting a sidelong glance at demons so fascinated with human culture, I turned on the TV. It's 11.50 in the morning. The new news program is shown on the LCD once it regains its color. Now, next in the news. Yesterday, about 10 p.m. Japan time, an abrupt temperature increase was observed within the Arctic Circle and glacial melting has occurred on a large scale. Oh. Eep. My cheek reached on his own. What they're reporting on the news, that's where we played yesterday. Transcendent being or not, no one chan's still just a kid. It seems that she's at her peak of wanting to play. But a demon lord isn't about to be satisfied with cards or video games. Since I'm holder of the power of the demon sword, she demands of me a play similar to wild animal sparring. And, well... Between blasting around destructive magic, cleaving with a demon sword, trying out new special attacks... To at least avoid wrecking the surroundings, we pick places like deserts or the Bermuda Triangle for our playgrounds. But every so often, one or the other of us overdoes it and causes damage like what happened this time. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! When I glance to my side, this time's guilty party makes an innocent look. After melting a thousand years of glaciers with the flames of hell, the demon lord dismissively says, It will freeze anew, so no harm done. The very incarnation of the phrase, Don't be fooled by appearances, is now engrossed in an article on the latest medical uses of maggots. You may have noticed a bit of an inconsistent here, where if I go into the text log, sometimes I use the Japanese-style angle quotes, and sometimes I have English style, like, quote quotes. That's something that if I were redoing this now, I would be more attentive to be more consistent with it. But as it is, I don't want to change anything too much for fear of breaking the text again, so it stays as it is. The cost of the temperature increase is unknown, but the opinion of some specialists is that the giant comet approaching Earth may be having some effect. The comet was spotted two years ago and is now visible to the naked eye. As reckoned by international space probes, this comet takes some 4,000 years on its current orbit, so it is a matter of much interest. Oh. It's being made out to be the comet's fault. I can even see this prig pretty comet from the window in my room at night. With the uproar over the great once-every-4,000-years comet, 
This comet is the hot topic lately on the news and in newspapers. Corona, Noel-chan, let's have lunch. This is Corona's mother. Hey, what's with the air conditioning? It's like the Arctic. Arctic? Arctic's colder! Oh, backtalk. I wouldn't mind much if you did, but what if Noel-chan catches cold? What? You're more worried about someone else's kid than your own child? Of course. Noel-chan is an important guest entrusted to our care. Besides, you guys are on dull summer vacation anyway, so a few days in bed with a cold will be no different. Um... Lady Mother, I am resistant to the cold, so it matters not. Oh, I see. But this month's electric bill is going to be awful. Someone who would have the air conditioning blaring 24-7 ought to get a job, maybe, and pay for it. Isn't that right, Corona? Um, right? Mom's voice is chilling. I was struck by the sheer chill. Mom's extremely dangerous in the state, especially when her face is smiling. It's no good to cross her. Nice weather today, isn't it? Go play outside after lunch. Yeah, 40 degrees Celsius, incidentally, is 104 Fahrenheit, and the TV broadcast in the background is warning of extreme temperatures. Yeah, nice weather. For a certain value of nice, I suppose. Also, a comment I missed uh, commenting earlier we are. Uh, when Noel addresses Mizuki as Lady Mother, that is a fairly common Japanese cultural thing where that's basically addressing her as her title in a way, as the resident mother. However, the way Noel says it, she uses the term haha dono. It's like a lot of her other speech that's rather archaic sounding. Anyway, back to the story. Fine. Mom drives the culprit from the house. I really don't want to go outside, but there's no room for objection. Behind me, the cold-hearted weather forecast pronounced a death sentence. 